So look, if you want to grow your wealth, your income, and increase the amount of time off, then these are the shortcuts that can help. Welcome to the Wealth Creation Podcast. Welcome everybody, Dan Latto speaking, Monday the 8th of June, thankfully we're in June, a little bit overcast today, the heavens opened up and the rain came down, over flooded the uh, swimming pool, who would have guessed uh, it rains in Spain, it's not true what that phrase says. Anyway, hope you're well, uh, in with a new week, we've been busy today, we've been on call after call after call, nearly forgot we were going live, but here we are, and in this session, uh, particularly, I want to talk to those people who are just first starting out, those people who want to do something, they want to be more than they currently are, and they are desperate to move on in life in some kind of way. And so if that's you and you're listening to this, then you're in the right place. Stay with me for the next 20 minutes as we go through a couple of ideas that I think will resonate for you. So the first thing, very first of all, is for most people, they are currently in a job and they're wanting to get out of that job. And then for those people who are out of a job and are starting a business, we'll talk about that very shortly. But for the first five minutes in this session, I want to talk to those people who are in a job right now. So let's diagram this in terms of where your income comes from. Um, so we've got income, and you've got expenses, and you've got a job. And a job is providing you with income right now. And that's awesome, by the way. Now, I know that people go, a job stands for just over broke. I don't like that. I like the fact that people have jobs. And in fact, one of the mistakes that I made was that I left my job far too early. So I was doing £100,000 a year at Dell, more or less. Uh, I've been there for about 18 months. And I hated it, by the way. Absolutely hated it. Uh, I was too young. I was under 30. My peers were in the 40s. But my peers back then, <laughs> 17 years ago, uh, <laughs> were my age now. So it's quite funny, really. Like, I'd be really good at that job. I'd be doing quarter million easy on that job. I'd be outsourcing it, for God's sake. So, uh, but I, I left that job far too early. But some people go, just over broke. Uh, I definitely wasn't just over broke. Uh, but for most people, you know, the, the money that you get in from a job goes out on you know, how do people rent at uh, £7.50 an hour? How do you afford life on £7.50 an hour? And so really this session is for those kind of people right now. So you've got a job, provides you with income, your expenses are far too high, you can't help that because you've got your expenses as low as possible, but they're still too high because rent's really high, you can't get on the housing ladder, petrol's high, you can't get on the tube because that's £8.50 a day or whatever it is, congestion charge is £20 a day, beyond ridiculous. I don't know how people survive in London. So the issue here is that you, you hate your job and so you don't spend a lot of time at your job or you spend as little time as possible. You're not invested in that job. And so for me, that's a problem. And that probably explains why you're not further on in that job. You know, I went from, uh, from the age of 26 to the age of just under 30. I went from £15,000 a year to a hundred grand a year in less than four years. The reason why I was able to do that, I was doing two things at the time. The first thing I was doing, and apologies for the chopper that's flying over the top of the house, to speak louder. But the first thing that I did in, in that job was, I'm going to make a list here, that's why I'm going quiet. The first thing that I did was I swapped jobs. I had interview after interview after interview. So number one is get interviews. So what happened was, when I was age 26, I got a job, 15 grand a year. As soon as I got that job, uh, I went and applied for my next job, 20 grand a year. As soon as I got that job, I applied for another job. And after I got that job, I applied for another job. And people go, you know, you can't do that because it looks really bad on your record. What record? What record have you got? I haven't got a record. What record have you got? Nobody knows what job you did and when and who. As long as you fill in all the gaps and it sounds fairly reasonable, get interviews. Go out there, put yourself out there. That's the first thing. But also the second thing was, was to add lots of value in the job. What that means is you've got to get there early to be the first one there, be the last one to leave. Make sure that your bosses see that happening all the time. Add extra value. 
be as valuable in that company as you can. Because this is the unwritten rule that most people kind of forget, they don't know, they ignore, is that you get paid in direct relation to the amount of value that you bring. So I'm going to say that again. You get paid for the... Uh, it, I can't even say it. You get paid in direct relation to the amount of value that you bring. So, for example, yesterday we saw a McDonald's worker who was on car park duty and he was doing all these dance moves. Um, it was uh, being shared virally on Facebook. His video was going around. Do you think that guy's going to get noticed? Potential for a pay rise, potential to fast track him up through management because he displays extra knowledge, gumption, whatever that happens to be. Yeah, I would suggest that he does. But this is what you want to be doing. You want to be adding value. When you add value and then you go for another job and your existing employer, let's say you're on 20 grand a year, your existing employer goes, no, don't go for that other job. We'll give you an extra five grand a year. Like, this is what I would do. I'd take the extra five grand a year and then I'd look for more jobs that's going to pay me 30 grand a year. That's what I would do. I'd go, yeah, I'll do that. I'll sign a 12-month contract. And then nine months in, I would be looking for a job that's going to get me another five, another ten thousand pounds, and that's exactly what we did. So this is going out for those people. But the key here is that you have to add value to your employer. And again, this is the mistake. People go, "Oh no, I've got to go to work tomorrow." That's that's crazy. Like if you're self-employed, you like some people do. Oh no, I've got to go to work tomorrow. If you're self-employed, you, you're doing the wrong self-employment. You can move out of that industry, move into an industry that you really enjoy. It's never work if you love it. I go live. We've had calls today. We've had coaching calls this morning. I love doing this. If I hated this, I wouldn't do it. I would go and do something else. But you've got to start adding value to be worth more. And then when you're on about going to a different company, taking your expertise and all your secrets with you, they're going to give you another pay rise to keep you there. And then nine months in, then start applying for the next jobs. And this is what happens. Let's let's do this as a diagram. This is what happens, okay? And this can happen pretty fast. And I, it can happen so fast, it can happen in less than four years. 15 grand to 100 grand a year. So let's say you're on 15K a year, which is not a lot of money at all, is it? But it's what, £7.50, £8, £9 an hour, something like that? Can you get from uh, 15K to 18K? Yeah. Can you get from 18K to... I don't know, 25? Maybe. Let's put that down as 22. Can you get from 22k a year to 26? Can you get from 26 to 35? Can you get from 35 to 50? Like you might need to blag a little bit. Have you got experience of this? Yeah, I can do that. And then you go home and read it. I literally did that. I had a, a job interview about Thin Client. Uh, Thin Client is a computer term. And they were asking me, uh, do you know about Thin Client? I'm like, yeah, of course I do. Uh, and then I went home. I bought a book, actually, from Waterstones. I read it through the night, uh, reading as fast as I could. Had the interview the next day. I went in. They were asking me about Thin Client. I'm like, yeah. It was such, this, I, don't know. I made a few mistakes, but they knew I knew what I was talking about. And I got more jobs. That's how you do it. Uh, thank you, by the way. Um He's just saying, thank you, Dan. You're always an inspiration. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, glad we could help. So, can you get from 35 to 50? Yeah. Can you get from 50 to 80? Yeah. Can you get from 80 to 120? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a seven-year journey. Potentially, seven-year journey. Now, they might go, hang on a minute. You've had one job per year. You might have to make up some stuff as to why that was like realistically why you, you've gone from job to job to job. And it could be, do you know what? It's because I'm worth more. I now know how much I'm worth. This is the job you're going for, 120,000 a year. I now know how much I'm worth. Here, I didn't know how much I was worth and I was testing it. And every time I tested it, it turned out I was worth more because of the value that I bring to the company. Like you say stuff like that to an employer, the employer, do you think anyone says that to employers? Absolutely not. So, I bring this amount of value, and this is the amount of value that I can bring to your organization. That's why I'm worth it. Because how many other people do you know in seven years gone from 15 grand to 120K in seven years? It's exactly the words that I would use. And so there's no reason why you can't do that. Now, it, this might be 
uh, unrealistic for you, or it might be less realistic for others. They might be going 120, I can do 240 in that amount of time. Like, we're all different. But the, the, the bit that everybody forgets is that if you want to be self-employed and you've got a job right now, you are self-employed. You are the product. Your employer is the customer. And most people don't see it like that. They just go, so let's say you've got a job at McDonald's. Let's use McDonald's as an example. Let's say you've got a job at McDonald's and you go, oh, no, I've got to go work at McDonald's. You should be waking up with excitement. Yes, I'm off to flip burgers. I'm off to clean the toilets. Brilliant. I'm, I'm going to make sure my supervisor, I'm going to get in there early. I'm going to make sure he sees me reading the workbook or whatever it is and building rapport with other colleagues. I'm going to add as much value. I'm going to be a positive inspiration for those people who are I'm working within McDonald's. I'm going to make sure my boss sees me. And when his boss comes in, I'm going to make sure he sees me and talks about me as well. All that stuff is really vital. You're not working for McDonald's. McDonald's is your customer. And you are the product. And you've got to be the best product you can be above all the other products that are working inside that McDonald's. So if you are self if you are employed, you've just got one customer. So you could do things like you could get there early. You could stay later. You could add more value. You could, um, let me see. Yeah, so this is the other bit I wanted to put here. Is that, and I apologize for the sound, by the way. Someone's chopping a tree down. I don't know what we're doing. If you're a cleaner and you're working in a company and that's your, self that's your employed job, okay, there's only so much value. And it's the same at McDonald's. There's only so much value that you can actually provide if you're a cleaner, right? Like, you just need a physical body. You might be able to clean a table or a desk or a bookshelf better than the next person, but how much better do you, can you get? Like, you can't get that much better. So at some point, it's not just enough being the best in that particular circle. So this is, let me put this as a diagram. So I'm trying to think, what would be the best diagram for this? Yeah, okay, let's do it this way. Uh, oh, let's do it slightly different. You're going to like this, by the way. You're all going to like these diagrams, I think. Okay. Oh, I know what we can do. We can actually use a, a proper example. So we call this fish tank theory. In fish tank theory, um, these are the fish, by the way. Oh, gosh, my fish get worse. That's a fish. You grow to accommodate the size of this tank. Okay, so if you're a cleaner or you're working at McDonald's and you're adding so much value, at some point, you're going to add so much value, you're going to move into a bigger fish tank. Most people don't do that. They stay in the same goddamn tank for the next 20 years and then wonder and complain why we're not moving forward anyway. But if you can now grow this fish tank and move into the next fish tank, and by the way, you're going to be starting at the bottom and you'll have to work up, but eventually, oh my gosh, my, this is a goldfish, believe it or not. My fish get worse and worse. And we call it fish tank theory because the fish will grow to accommodate the size of the tank, just like humans do. We grow to accommodate the size of our world. And your job right here is to expand horizons in both ways. But if you're a cleaner or you're working at McDonald's and you've learned everything that's in this fish tank, you can, you can only grow so much and then you've got to move into the next one. And the part of this that will do this is two things. One is experience and one is knowledge. So experience and knowledge. If you're working as a, a cleaner or if you're working at McDonald's, you've got all the knowledge. You've got all the experience. Then you move into the next fish tank. You haven't got as much knowledge and as much experience, but eventually over time, you learn to grow, to expand into this next thing that you're going to do. And then you've got all the knowledge and then you've got all the experience. And at that point, you move into the next one. Most people don't do this. And so when I when I first started out, you know, my first company car was like a Ford Escort. Do you remember those back in the day? And it, it was a nice, shiny new car. Um, and my mates were really jealous in my Ford Escort, you know. That's where I was. And then I expanded my job and I got a BMW convertible. I absolutely loved that. It was a P-Reg, 1997, British Racing Green. I loved that car. Still love that car, that old shape. And I moved up here. My mates, by the way, are here in their little fish tank. They're not expanding. My car after that was a Porsche 911 convertible that I paid 42 grand for. 
and my mates are still here and they're looking at this car at 42 grand and we're going, how the hell do you afford that? And what they failed to see is that I went through every single step. I got better jobs, I got more educated, I got more experienced, and yet they were staying in exactly the same spot. But if you're going to stay in exactly the same spot, in 20 years' time, when you're seeing other people go through this, okay, like I'm 20 years on, when I, I'm 47 now, started when I was 26, so if I look back at what my friends are doing, they might have moved to this one, maybe, right? My fish tank today is, is all of it, it's the size of a bloody bought quite frankly and it's got unlimited potential we're talking about buying businesses right now one of the calls was just almost a business acquisition uh training call because because I, i'm expanding what we do and you've got to be expanding what you do but you can only do it through education of, of the job and getting excellent at that job and getting experience and when you get experience you're going to make some mistakes you're going to do things well you learn from the mistakes and you re-implement the things that you do really well. Uh, if you've got any questions, by the way, on that, uh, let me know. But that's how you do it. You've got to move from this one to this one to this one to this one. Everybody thinks I want to be wealthy and they think I go from here to here in one jump. That is not how wealth works. You might think it is. Some people can do it. Zuckerberg, um, Elon Musk. But even Elon Musk had these little steps. Zuckerberg is a one-off. Like, he's had one company. Like, I know he owns lots of companies, but Facebook is the company, and it obviously acquires lots of other companies. But really, he's the only... Like, who else has gone from there to there? Steve Jobs, maybe? Probably not. He went through this as well. Everybody goes through this. But the problem is, when we talk about wealth and income and, and be financially free, people want to go from here to here. They've got a weekend course to jump around, give high fives, to read affirmations, I am wealthy, right? I have problems with any of that. I, I'm totally fine, but don't expect to get from here to here in one jump. It's very, very rare that that happens, unless you've got partners that can that have different skill sets that will allow you to maybe take that jump. But you've got to go from step to step to step. And, and again, there's two things. One is education, and the other one is experience. You, you can't stay where you are you know, I see Uber, uh, not Uber drivers. I see um, one of the guys that um, uh, drop the food off. It's not Uber. I can't think of the name. It's like an Uber Eats. Let's just take that as an example because I can't think of the name of it. You know, I, I was arguing with someone on Facebook and they were going, you know, it's, it's disgusting £7.50 an hour for someone who delivers food. You can't, you can't raise a family on that. And I'm like, dude, you're not supposed to raise a family on that. That's a starting point. That's here. You're not supposed to be there in 20 years' time. If you are there in 20 years' time, you need to have a, a good, serious look at what you've been doing for the last 20 years because you've made some mistakes. And I don't think it's a problem making mistakes as long as you understand you've made them and you start to rectify them. But if you're an Uber Eats delivery guy or an Uber driver or you're working at McDonald's and you're in your 50s, when I worked at Asda, I worked at Asda when I was 16, £1.67 was my wage at 16 years of age, £1.67. And I remember, bear, bear in mind, that's th over 30 years ago, okay? If I go to Asda, I've seen the same guys in Asda five years ago that were working there when I worked there. They've been working at Asda for 25 years on minimum wage. What the hell have you been doing? Well, not everybody wants this. I get that, but then you can't complain that prices have gone up if you're not doing that. You can't complain that you can't afford a holiday but you can't afford rent because who else? Who's responsible? This is how life works. This is society. This is who we are as a species. We've created this. We live in a capitalist society. If you think you're going to stay on £7.50 an hour, minimum wage, whatever it happens to be in line with inflation for the next 30 years, you then can't complain in 30 years because other people are doing this and you're still doing this. That's not how that stuff works. So you've got to work out where do you want to be? What do you want? Well, I want to earn 10 grand a month clear after all my expenses. Perfect. That could be 10K. What's the plan to get you there? That could be seven. That could be three. That could be one. I don't know. What's the plan that's going to get you there? And then we just look at the money matrix again. And again, this is really for those people who are first starting out. And I'm going to show you in a second just how we do this. 
Because you've got to work out where do you want to be. You could also work out, by the way, where do you not want to be? So there's a couple of things that you can do to make more money right now. So let me just check if there's any uh, comments. No comments coming in. If you can leave me a like, by the way, that would be appreciated. Uh, let's just put um, this one up. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I want to talk about how you make more money. So if you're working in a job right now or you've got your own business and you're just first starting out, really that's what this session is about. But if, let's just say, take those people who are working in a job right now because a good proportion of people will be doing that. A good proportion of people will be working in McDonald's as a cleaner, Uber Eats, Deliveroo. That's who I meant to say, Deliveroo, Deliveroo drivers. I was in Birmingham in winter. And it was pouring it down, it's freezing cold, and the poor delivery driver. And I looked at my mate there and I'm like, that's got to suck, that job. And it's freezing cold. I mean, I know you might get fit and minimum wage, but you're not even on minimum wage, are you? I don't think on, on that job. You get paid when you work and you're not working all the time. And I don't know how that works. Anyway, if you're in a, a job right now and you want to earn some extra um, income, then there's a couple of ways of doing it. So one is manual labor. Manual labor is where you physically have to turn up and go do something. It doesn't necessarily mean cleaning or moving bricks around. Manual labor is where you physically have to go somewhere. So that could be, you know, I worked at William Hill in the call center taking bets on a phone. Uh, I worked at Symphony Kitchens uh, doing 40 hours there. And then I went and worked at William Hill evenings and weekends. Uh, that was my side hustle, if you like. But it's still a job, effectively. But manual labor is where you have to physically go and turn up okay but you know 10 pounds an hour 10 hours a week it's 40 hours that's for an extra 400 pounds a month that's five thousand pounds a year so 10 hours uh times four weeks is 400 per month which is about five thousand pound a year a start after three years you got a 15 grand deposit you can buy your first buy to let just working 10 hours a week, so that could be Saturday and Sunday, it could be, uh, it could be what, two hours every evening, Monday, Monday through Friday, gives you £400 a month, it's about £4,800, uh, obviously you've got tax and things off that, so you have to take that into account, your take home needs to be £10 an hour. And that's at £10, if you're able to do £20 an hour, by the way, or, let's do the maths actually, so at £20 an hour times 20 hours a week, so that's Saturday and Sunday and evenings, okay, doable. Uh, what's 20 times 20? Um, is 400 a week, 1,600 a month. Uh, it's, at, uh, it's about 18,000 a year. So in one year, you can have your first buy to let property. And people are watching this going, we're watching this going one of two things. If you're going, that's ridiculous, you can't do that. Or, and you're right, or we're going, oh wow, I can do that. And you're right. It doesn't change this. Your attitude doesn't change whether it's realistic or not. Some people are doing this. Some people are not. Both are true based on who you think you are and what you're about. Okay. That's manual labor. The second one is you could be a broker of some kind. I'll give you an example. Property sourcing is a broker. So they find a person with a, a problem of some kind uh, who has a house. Okay. This is them. They're in the middle and they find an investor who's got cash. And this person, which is you, introduces these people together and you make some cash. One example, that's property saucer. Put down a saucer. Next example could be, uh, let's say, a plumbing business. Give you an example, okay? Just check if there's any comments coming in. Let me just have a quick look. Oh, three pound. Let me put that up. Three pound forty-two at Iceland eighteen years ago. Still, some of the same people working there from that time. Absolutely. And you remember that fish tank? They're the ones who complain that all the rich people have got all the money. 
and they're still in their same fish tank. Thank you for sharing that, by the way. It's funny, isn't it? Going back to £3.82. E, you don't know when you were born. Uh, so, plumbing, okay, totally random, but it could be anything like this. You could have a website that generates leads for plumbers. You can either sell each lead or you could charge them £100 per month. So you could sell each lead for fiver, you could charge them £100 a month, you could spend, let's say you spend, I don't know, £25 on Facebook ads. So you're going to make 75 quid off that. Guess what? You only have to do that once. You only have to set up a website, start driving leads. I don't know, by the way, if you can charge £100 a month and uh, pay £25 to get leads. I don't know if you can do that. I've never done that. Could be something that could be worth looking into. But creating a business that does this, the beauty of this is you're not now having to do manual labour. As a sourcer, um, you'd earn, what, 1,500 quid, £2,500? We've got a deal going through right now, £3,000 finder's fee. We've got another deal going through, which I think we've just negotiated, £10,000 finder's fee. I'd much rather do that than manual labour. I'd also much rather do this. This is now based on my experience and my expertise and my education. Remember what we were saying before? Uh, this is where most people go. Most people are in this little tank here, this little fish tank. They never grow, but you grow through education and experience. By the way, when you first do this plumbing website thing that generates leads, you're going to get it a lot wrong. Most people give up here. They just give up. It doesn't work. I tried. It doesn't work. And there's other people that, have, that did this 15 years ago, and they're doing, I mean, you can add zeros onto the end of it. So that, that would be a broker. The other thing that you could do, let me just get rid of this here. The other thing that you could do, which is very high margin, because you've got basically zero costs other than marketing costs, is you could be a coach. Let's talk about coaching for a second. So I still do coaching. We're not cheap, but we still do it. Um, so you could coach somebody. Now, this is the thing. People go... I haven't got qualifications. How can I coach somebody? You don't need qualifications. I haven't got qualifications. And yet I coach people. I'm NLP qualified, I suppose. But I don't coach NLP. I coach on property and I coach on business. People go, well, what qualifications have you got? Dude, I don't have any qualifications. You don't want to use me? Don't use me. You do want to use me? Use me. But you could be a weight loss coach. You could be a, a, um, sort of a grief coach, for example. If you're really good and you've got lots of empathy, not me, if you, you've got lots of empathy and you can say things like, oh, that must be so difficult for you. You're, you're very brave. I can't do stuff like that without sounding really condescending. Oh, that must be so hard. You're such a brave little soldier. Oh, I, I'm, not, you know, I'm not very good at it. But you could do stuff, okay, that has empathy, which I haven't got. There is, there's a room for you to make £25 an hour, £50 an hour, £100 an hour. Dr. Phil... Uh, by the way, in the US, he was found, he was an uh, Oprah's um, person, and she put him on TV, and then he went and made loads of money. I don't know what qualifications he got, he probably has got some. But you don't have to have these qualifications to be a coach, but I'm not saying that you coach for £10,000 an hour, that's ridiculous. If you can get someone who's got a problem and you can help them solve it faster, that's coaching. That's all coaching is. If you had somebody who every time... Um, you, you went on a phone call and the awake coach and all they did was yell at you like you could get paid for that like I was joking with my um, my mate Dave and we were talking about this and he was, I was I, we were just talking about something uh, and he's like oh that sounds so bad and he was so condescending the way that he did it and it actually changed my behaviour because I realised I was just being a bit of a jerk like, if you've got that ability, like my mate Dave has, he's got an ability to sound like um, I'm not hard done by at all. Oh, it must be so bad at your villa in Spain and that didn't work. Oh, dear. He's very good at that. He could get paid for coaching for doing that. He'd actually get paid a lot of money. I would pay, pay Dave to do that. Don't tell him that. Um, but you could do some coaching of some kind. What about uh, the next one, then, is some sort of training, which is different than coaching. 
So coaching is like live, like on the phone. Tell me about this. What's going on here? What about that? Like proper coaching is where you turn it back on the client and go, how do you think you should fix that? I don't do that either, by the way. I'm not very good at that. I, my kind of coaching is more, what have you done that for, you idiot? Don't do that. Do this. Fair. Fair's your result. Thank you very much. My coaching is slightly different than most. Or you could do training. So like we've got property sourcing um, training, £27. Uh, we have at least a sale a day, sometimes two sales a day. Sometimes we had 11 sales. I think we had 17 sales in one day. We're on a £27 training course, a £57 training course, £197 pound training course. It's up to you. You sell it to whatever you want. It could be 15 modules, four videos per module, 60 videos in total. It's up to you on how you want to do that. But if you can provide some sort of training, so let's say that you know how to lose weight and build muscle. Could you coach other people on how to do that? Or could you create some videos, pre-recorded videos, and put it together as a training package? Do you know how to do Facebook ads? Can you teach other people how to do that via some sort of training package? Absolutely. There's always something that you're good at better than other people. Are you a good copywriter? In which case, can you show other people how to be a better copywriter? Of course you can. But you've got to pick one of these. And there are many, many more. You know, you don't have to be a manual labor. You don't have to be a broker. You don't have to do coaching. You don't have to train. These are just examples to give you some kind of idea. Uh, but you could do this and you could start generating extra income that will get you on to improving your cash flow. Let's check if we've got any comments. Um, we haven't. I hope you've got anything to say. Just let me know. Otherwise, we'll call it. 30 minutes. I'm actually late for my next call, so we'll call it anyway. Hope that's useful for you. So we will speak to you on Wednesday. My name's Dan Latter. Take care. Hey, it's Dan here. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Please click like or subscribe to the entire podcast.